Assassin's Creed Shadows has been delayed until 2025 and yet another massive blow to Ubisoft. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT and is anyone really surprised basically after they canceled their Tokyo Game Show appearance and then they started canceling other appearances? People were wondering what the hell was going on with Assassin's Creed Shadows behind the scenes and if Ubisoft even had their crap together in the first place and it turns out nope. They didn't, and they waited until the very last possible second to tell people about it, which is just crazy to me in the video game industry to wait until, what, about a month and a half away from launching a massive title for this game company, as much as people want to knock it, Assassin's Creed is a big brand. A month and a half from launching that, they say it's being delayed to add features and make it better and polish it more, and at the end of the day, you're like, wait, you didn't know this like three months ago? You, you waited till today to tell us this? It makes me think there was a lot more going on behind the scenes at Ubisoft that they were lying again, not being fully truthful as to the situation that Assassin's Creed Shadows is really facing. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down Ubisoft and the complete catastrophe behind the scenes. In a couple of press releases that they had, one of them financial and one of them more to the public facing on Twitter, they talked about why Assassin's Creed Shadow is getting delayed and how they want to polish it more. And then they also talked about how the board of directors is launching an internal investigation to Ubisoft themselves to find out what the hell is going on internally there because this is not acceptable. Let's kick off with the statement they posted to Twitter saying, Dear players, Assassin's Creed Shadows is a dream project for us, finally bringing the series to feudal Japan for many players developed with our community in mind, such as parkour or the renewed stealth brought by new technology all set in a beautiful and immersive world. This is an ambitious addition to the franchise, a rich experience that can be lived through the eyes of two unique protagonists. But we realize we need more time to polish and refine the experience, pushing further some of our key features. Now, before I even keep going here, so they just realized, like I said, a month and a half before launching this game everywhere, that they need more time to polish it to add new features to it. They, they couldn't have like realized this a while ago. It feels like internally that there were people just pretending that everything was on schedule and good until the actual due date of it. And then they're like, oh, I actually didn't do any of my homework teacher. Sorry, can I extend my deadline by four months? As such, we've made the decision to postpone the release date to February 14th, 2025. The game will release on a broad range of platforms, including Steam at launch. Additionally, pre-orders will be refunded and all future pre-orders will be granted the first expansion for free. Now think about this for a second. This is Ubisoft heavy on the DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. They are very tight with companies like Sweet Baby Inc. And they understand that their protagonist that has been quite controversial as Yasuke, a black samurai, if you are to ask Ubisoft, it's weird just to boot this down until Black History Month of next year without thinking that that's a little bit too convenient to make it seem like I don't know, virtue signaling? We understand this decision will come as disappointing news, especially to those who have been waiting patiently for an Assassin's Creed game inspired by feudal Japan. But we sincerely believe this is in the best interest of the game and ultimately your experience as a player. Basically, Ubisoft saying that, that we know our game is crap right now and we hope to add additional features, smooth it out, make it look better, play better, have the action sequences work better, and maybe the stealth improve better than Star Wars Outlaws, and maybe we'll have a functional game for you next year, but right now, it's just not ready. Rest assured, we're looking forward to the moment you will embark on a memorable adventure with Naoi and Yasuke. Until then, we thank you for your ongoing support. Not sure who they're thanking outside of a handful of 
very diehard Assassin's Creed fans because everyone I've been seeing and speaking to about this game has literally no interest in it. They are standing back and just watching the fire burn. But here's where it gets really interesting was the Ubisoft updates its financial targets for fiscal year 2024, 2025. And this statement is extremely telling for what's actually going on internally at Ubisoft right now. Listening to players' feedback as an illustration of our player-centric approach, the following important decisions relative to Assassin's Creed Shadows have been taken. One, Assassin's Creed Shadows will now be released February 14th, 2025. While the game is feature complete, supposedly, the learnings from the Star Wars Outlaws release led us to provide additional time to further polish the title. Before I even keep going, that might be an acceptable excuse for like a small indie company or even like a big AAA company that's new to the industry, that's like their first release or second release. This is Ubisoft. So them saying, hey, we learned a lot from our previous release of Star Wars Outlaws to implement in our upcoming release of Assassin's Creed Shadows doesn't really work when you say, wait, you've been making these games for, for decades. Like, wh why all of a sudden are you learning new things? This will enable the biggest entry in the franchise to fully deliver on its ambition, notably by fulfilling the promise of our dual protagonist adventure with Naoi and Yasuke bringing two very different gameplay styles, which that is one of those things that it falls back on the DEI again with it, and it was over ambitious. There was no need to create two different protagonists and make people play through the game like that. In fact, it would have probably been better just to straight up copy the formula of Ghost of Tsushima and just slap Assassin's Creed name on it. It would have been fine. But no, Ubisoft had to go the DEI route of injecting the Japanese female and the black samurai warrior, according to Ubisoft, that literally has nothing to do with real Japanese history. We're departing from the traditional season pass model. All players will be able to enjoy the game at the same time on February 14th, and those who pre-order the game will be granted the first expansion for free. The game will mark the return of our new releases on Steam day one. So they're trying to push forward some goodwill, saying we're going to refund all the pre-orders, give people their money back, and let them know they can pre-order it again. And if they do, they'll get the season pass with it for free. But to be honest, in the modern era of gaming, especially coming from Ubisoft, it feels like the season pass stuff is always tacked on that was cut out of the original game just to make it feel like there's more when in reality, if they weren't able to add season passes, it would have been a part of the game in the first place. But hey, it's something, I guess. But here's where it gets comical. Additionally, despite solid ratings, Metacritic 76 and user scores across the first party and Epic stores, 3.9 out of five. A Metacritic 76 is not a solid rating. Like, it's, it's actually like, Barely average in the modern era of gaming. I would not call that a solid score to my investors. That is straight up lying to them. A solid score on Metacritic would be like at 82, 83, 84 even, before you start getting into really good scores, great scores. Solid score would be low to mid 80s. Not, not mid 70s. That's an average game at best. In response to player feedback, Ubisoft's development team are currently fully mobilized to swiftly implement a series of updates to polish and improve the player experience in order to engage a large audience during the holiday season to position Star Wars Outlaws as a strong long-term performer. The game will be available on Steam on November 21st. So Ubisoft is looking at Star Wars Outlaws as the, yeah, it didn't have a good launch, but we're going to keep working on it, retooling it, and making it better, and then Eventually, in the holiday season, everyone will just randomly go buy it because that's what they're waiting for. Yves Guimont, co-founder and chief executive officer, said, Our second quarter performance fell short of our expectations, prompting us to address this swiftly and firmly with an even greater focus on a player-centric, gameplay-first approach and an unwavering commitment to the long-term value of our brands. Now, that almost feels like we're getting through to Ubisoft and they're realizing that the money that people spend actually matters and we open our wallets if they do what we want them to do. In light of the recent challenges, we acknowledge the need for greater efficiency while delighting players. As a result, beyond the first important short-term actions undertaken, the executive committee 
under the supervision of the board of directors, is launching a review aimed at further improving our execution, notably in this player-centric approach, and accelerating our strategic path towards a higher performing model to the benefit of our stakeholders and shareholders. Again, kind of almost sounds like they're realizing that their whole DEI approach to injecting it into the games was not what players actually wanted. And it almost feels like they want to take a step back from that and start giving players what they actually want. But then again, it's Ubisoft, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. And then the craziest part is how they start talking about agendas and how this almost feels like it was directed specifically at YouTubers who were critiquing them. Finally, let me address some of the polarized comments around Ubisoft lately. I want to reaffirm that we are an entertainment first company, creating games for the broadest possible audience. And our goal is not to push any specific agenda. Well, there's that word. And they're trying to tell people, hey, look at what we're saying, not what we're doing. And just trust our words because we've been honest with you this whole time, right? We remain committed to creating games for fans and players that everyone can enjoy. Now, look at that all together, creating games for the broadest possible audience, not to push a specific agenda for everyone to enjoy, almost feels like they're making a game for no one. They just want everyone to buy it, so just make it as broad as possible and just hope, hey, we cast a large enough net. We're gonna catch some fish somewhere, right? Ubisoft's credibility with players is on thin ice these days. The delayed launch puts the spotlight on Ubisoft's ability to manage its biggest franchise in a rapidly changing landscape. And for some reason, they seem to think that no one else is going to buy any games from any other companies in the next six months. Everyone's just so focused on these two Ubisoft games that everything will be fine. People will just buy our games when we update them. That's at least what they're telling the investors. And I'm not really buying it. I don't really think that's what's going to work for them. And I think deep down, even Ubisoft themselves realizes that. In many ways, Assassin's Creed Shadows has become the company's make it or break it moment. As the calendar speeds towards next February, Black History Month, Ubisoft is up against the wall. The next six months are gonna determine not only the fate of Assassin's Creed Shadows, but possibly the future of Ubisoft itself. And to me, it looks like Ubisoft is turning into yet another victim of DEI. In this case, a pretty big one. But anyways, we'll see what happens. A lot of moving parts going on right now. Ubisoft, I wanted to bring this to you guys and just kind of organize it as best I could because holy crap, there was a lot of information. It's not just Ubisoft it's reeling. It's not just shadows being delayed. It's not just Star Wars being updated and all these changes going on. It's just like, it almost feels like everything's coming together right now. And Ubisoft is like, we don't know what to do with it. We thought it would just magically work itself out. And it's just this mangled mess that we're left with. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more information, check out SmashJT.com. If you appreciate what I'm doing, hit that join button. And as always, you stay smashing. So, um, and when you talk about uh, it being the most ambitious, are you hoping for it to be the best-selling Assassin's Creed game? Is that how I can read those that commentary? Could you talk about pre-orders for both Outlaws and, and Shadows and how they compare to previous titles? So in terms of, um, um, we, uh, we don't disclose nor comment uh, pre-orders usually. What we can say is that uh, what we've been observing and measuring uh, is that uh, our two uh, big titles actually are indeed uh, among the most awaited uh, games of the, of the industry and they uh, enjoy a very strong positive community sentiment overall. Smash, 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 smash.